All right, so this is a basics tutorial. Let's dive right in here to the technique. So here I am inside of Inkscape and I have a new composition opened up and I have this red rectangle as my background. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is draw the shape that you wanna rotate your objects around. So to do that, I'll draw a circle by grabbing the ellipse tool or the circle tool there from the toolbox. And what I'm gonna do is click and drag this across my composition. If I hold control, that's going to lock this as a perfect circle. And I'll release my mouse. Next, what I'll do is come up top here. You're gonna see this little icon for the align tool. You can also use shift control A as the shortcut key. And that will also bring up the align and distribute tab here. So we're going to align this relative to the page and we're just going to both horizontally and vertically align this. Once that's done, I'm gonna draw my second element, which is going to be the element or the object that we wanna rotate around this circle. So to do that, in my case, I'm just gonna come over here to the polygon tool, make sure this is set to the regular polygon shape here, and the corners I'll have set to three, if it'll let me. And then I'm going to click and drag this, and if I hold the control key, it'll snap this in 15 degree increments. I basically just want this to be straight up and down, as you can see here, and release. So I'll grab my select tool here and you can either drag it to the center or actually what I recommend doing once this is selected with the align and distribute tab still opened here, we're just going to center align this vertically to the page. So make sure this is in the location that you want it in because this is going to be where it's gonna be set up once we rotate. So this is the first position of our object. All right, so with our object placed at the top of the circle here or wherever we want this to be to start out, now I'm going to place a live path effect on this triangle by going to path, path effects. And so here's the path effects tab over here. Next, I'm gonna come down and click this little plus icon. And that's going to allow me to add a live path effect here. So here we are inside the live path effects selector. You're going to search for the Rotate Copies Live Path Effects right here. So click on that to enable it. And for starters, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna be way off where we want it to be. And it's going to show up here as Rotate Copies. You can toggle this on or off. And then you've got some options here, which we're gonna get into a little bit. But the main thing you wanna do is come over here and grab your Select by Nodes tool or Edit Paths by Nodes tool. The N key on the keyboard is going to be the shortcut key for that. You're also going to want to make sure over here in snapping that you have the midpoint turned on. So it says toggle snapping to object midpoint. So we're going to click to enable that. And now we're going to click and drag this middle node here. You'll see it kind of converges these two line segments. They're going to converge into this middle node. So we're going to click and drag that node towards the center of the object that we want to rotate this around. And as long as you are relatively close to the center of the object, because I have snapping turned on, it should automatically snap to the center. And when I release, you're gonna see now our objects are rotating around the circle. And you'll see there's another handle here. This allows you to change the starting angle. So if I click and drag this around, it's going to change where the rotation starts. So right now it's slightly off center. And that's actually gonna be this value right here. So if this is set to zero, it's gonna start with our object in that original position, in this case, pointing directly up and down. But make sure your method is set to normal if you don't see what I see right now. Below the method, you have number of copies. So right now, this is gonna be set to six by default, but we can click to increase the amount of copies. So there we have 10 copies, which looks pretty good. Or we can decrease the amount if we only want a certain number there. So there we have four copies. So I'm gonna go back up to 10. The starting angle, as I just talked about, is going to be where the rotation itself starts relative to the origin point, which is right here. So this is set to zero. If we set it to 90, I believe it's gonna start like over here. So let's change this to 90. It's hard to tell because they're all the exact same. But as you can see here, now it's going this way. So that's the starting angle. The rotation angle is gonna be set by default based on the number of copies you have because Right now this is set to distribute evenly. So it's having to evenly distribute 10 copies. And so it's using the predefined rotation angle. However, if I turn this off, we can set a custom rotation angle here. So let's go with like 25, for example. And there you're gonna see, it's not gonna be evenly distributed, but there's going to be 25 degrees of rotation between each object. 
So I recommend keeping distribute evenly turned on unless you have a specific application where you don't want these evenly distributed. The gap I'll just leave set to the default as I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not even sure what this does, but if you hover over it, it says gap space between copies, use small negative gaps to fill some joins. I'm just gonna leave that set to the default. The origin we've already talked about, that's gonna be the center around which everything rotates. It's easier to set this using the nodes tool over here manually but you can set it over here using values if you want. So I've already covered distribute evenly. Mirror copies is kind of confusing. As you can see here, when you check it, it does some weird things. And let me just come over here. If I actually uncheck distribute evenly, and then we change the rotation angle to something different here. There we go. Now if I come over here to mirror copies, you're gonna see the result of that. So. Not really quite intuitive, so I don't tend to use that option there. So we're gonna uncheck that and turn back on distribute evenly. The final option here is kind of important depending on your use case, but split elements allows you to basically separate each of the newly created object copies so that you can custom style each one of them individually. So if I check this option here, now you're gonna see it's going to select just a single object so just keep this object in mind. It is important actually, because if you wanna click back on these objects at any time to access the rotate copies settings here, you do need to make sure it's this one that you're clicked on. So for example, if I click on this one here, the settings disappear. If I click on this one, now they reappear. But this allows you to style each one of these. So let's say you wanted to just go through each one and recolor them. Let's go with something that's easier to see. So this is just allowing me to change the styling up on these. You can even rotate these if you want. So if I grabbed the select tool, clicked on here to bring up the rotate handles, you can rotate these individually. If you rotate this top one, it will apply to all of them and kind of screw it up. So I don't recommend doing that. But let's say this top one here, let's change the color of this to purple. If I wanted to make sure this purple one was at the bottom and all this other stuff was over here on the other side, I would use the starting angle to do that. So for example, come over here, let's change this to 180, hit the enter key, that'll flip it around. So this is now pointing down and everything that was on this side is now on the other side of the shape. So I can turn off these split elements at any time, provided that I'm clicked on whatever object has all the settings. So if I'm clicked on this one, obviously I can't change it. But if I'm clicked on this purple one, and I come over here and I uncheck split elements, now all of them will have the same properties. So in this case, I may want to grab the eyedropper tool, change the color back to yellow and now we're good to go. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.